So today I'm going to talk about a simple guide to understanding DNA, RNA, protein, and genomes. And it's mainly meant for high school students. So why did I think about coming up with this video? So I was recently chatting with my daughter about molecular biology. And I realized that there are several textbooks that make it very difficult to understand the science behind them. And as a result, everything seems complex. I've always enjoyed simplifying the complex. So this is my attempt, primarily for high school students, but also for healthcare professionals who probably did not have molecular biology in detail when they were stuck. So let's start with just what is a cell right? and, and where, where are cells found in the body? So our body is made up of trillions of cells. Now, according to recent estimates, they put this number to approximately 30 trillion. Now guess how many numbers, how many zeros that is? It's 12 zeros. So a million that you are probably more familiar with is about six zeros. So think about this as being a million, million cells, right? So basically that's a lot of number of cells in one human being. Each cell comes with an instruction manual that is to be read in the microscopic world. You can't expect that you're going to be able to read all of this in the normal way that you and I read a book. And this instruction manual is known as the genome. This manual, if you think about it, has chapters that we call as chromosomes. So in our case, because we have 23 pairs of chromosomes, think about this as having 46 chapters. There are going to be paragraphs in this instruction manuals that are known as genes. And the tiny alphabet of four is known as a DNA. So this tiny alphabet of four, that is A, C, T, and G, is known as DNA. And DNA stands for deoxyribonucleic acid. And this is normally, it says deoxy because it lacks an oxygen molecule as compared to a ribonucleic acid, which is basically your RNA. Now, there is a very small difference between the DNA and RNA alphabet. So you have A, C, T, and G in, in the DNA. And in, in RNA, you will have A, C, U, and G. As you probably recall, A always pairs with the T, C with the G in the DNA. In the case of RNA, you have A pairs with the U and C pairs with the G, right? So C and G, that part remains the same, but in, in the case of RNA, A will pair with the U. Now you may remember that DNA is found primarily inside the nucleus and it is double-stranded. All those beautiful places where you've seen the DNA, including a MacMy genome uh, logo, has double-stranded DNA, and that is what all of us remember. But occasionally, this DNA, which is normally found in the nucleus, can also be found in the mitochondria, that is known as the powerhouse of the cell. Now, you may also remember that this is the place where we get ATP, and ATP is the energy currency of the cell. Without ATP, you can't do your bodily function. The cells can't do its uh, functions. You can't do many other things. So we can talk about mitochondria and ATP a little bit later as well. So how does the same DNA get into 30 trillion cells, right? How do you make sure that you have all these cells that are identical in terms of their instruction manual? So we all remember that cells divide right, to make more cells. So you start with one cell, you're dividing it to make another cell. That process is known as replication. Replication, like we all know, means copying, right? Now, it's not as simple as putting it in a Xerox machine and getting out a copy of the paper that you just put in with something written on it. But it has a, a lot more complex uh, things that are involved. And we'll talk a little bit about a few of the ones that we need in that process, right? And these important players are also known as enzymes. And we'll talk about four of them. There are many more also that are involved. And the four important ones are DNA polymerase, helicase, primase, and lycase, right? Now, 
while they do sound a little complex, if you break them down into little pieces, you'll be able to understand that they all have some specific function on it. Now, as we discussed, DNA is made up of two strands. And in order to copy that DNA, you will need to strip that whole double helix apart, right? You have this, it is coiled, and, and let's assume that it is uh, straightened up. How do you do that, right? Now, you, the enzyme that you use to actually strip that apart, that helical structure is called a helicase. So it basically strips it apart. It breaks down the hydrogen bonds that are there between these two strands, and that's where you get a single strand of DNA. Now, once you have stripped this apart, you need something to build on this strand. And how do you build that? You need something that you call as a DNA polymerase. And that's where it comes to the rescue. Now, the DNA polymerase doesn't know where to start, right? So you have the enzyme, but the enzyme needs to know where to start building this up. And for that, you need the enzyme that is known as the primase. Because primer, as you might recall, is what you start with, a primer of a book, a primer of something else, that's where you begin. So the primers basically tells you where you're going to start with. So now the primers tells the DNA polymerase that this is where you begin, and now you can start, right? So you have the single strip of DNA. You had had the helicase that cut it off. You got the DNA polymerase and you know where the primers is. So now the DNA polymerase starts to build on it. So if you had an A, it starts putting a T. If you had a C, it puts a G and so on. And that's where you get the exact two strands of DNA. Now they are two separated ones. So you need somebody to put them back together also, right? And that's where you have the ligase. That's sort of like your glue that puts these two pieces together. So um, that's where we are. So you've got the DNA, you know that this can replicate, you can get multiple types of it till it gets into all these uh, 30 trillion cells and so on. So now assume that we have identical DNA in all of these cells. What do we do? How does the cell now know what it needs to do, right? Now, even though you have the same DNA in all your different parts of your body, each part of your body has a different function, a different role. Your hands know what to do, your ears know what to do and so on. So how does each of them know? And these are typically done because you're, you're going to see that the instruction manual not only has the, um, the code, but it also then converts the DNA into RNA and into protein, which sort of help in, in understanding that further. So how does DNA make RNA and then proteins? So we started off, we had a double-stranded DNA molecule. These genes have the instructions for making proteins, right? And what do we mean by instructions for making proteins? Is there somewhere where it says, like when you look at a recipe book, it tells you do this, do that, and so on. Does it, is it like that? Or how does it, how does it actually happen? So we remember that you have these ACTG. This is where what we code for, let's say when you get a genome per three, you get information on your, on your DNA. And how do we move from there to a more complex protein? So first, we have to know about how an mRNA is made, right? So that is your messenger RNA. Uh, there is an enzyme, just like we talked about the DNA polymerase, there is an RNA polymerase, and that sits on one strand of the DNA at the start of the gene, and it makes what we call as a messenger RNA. So RNA, if you remember, has A, C, G, and U. So you don't have a T, you have a U. And so A will pair with the U and G will pair with the C, making while making that strand of DNA of, of your mRNA. And that process is known as transcription. So you started off with the DNA, which was in your ACTG, but you are now creating it into an RNA molecule by the use of uh, the RNA polymerase. And so what you are getting is essentially somebody who has transcribed into uh, into RNA, where you just change your T into a U, right? And so when you look at things like your medical transcription, your school transcript, the word transcript comes from Latin. And while you don't have to know it, it comes from two words, trans and scribia. So trans means beyond or across, and scribia means to write. So you're basically writing beyond from, so you start from one and you're writing into something else. 
So what you're doing in this case is basically using the code of the DNA and making a transcript in the letters of RNA. So I hope that is clear in terms of how do you make a messenger RNA or an mRNA uh, that we call, right? So why is it a messenger? Well, because it now has a message that says it's ready to be translated, right? So that's why it is called a messenger RNA. And you are wondering what is translation? Are you translating it from one language to another? No. You are translating it from your DNA to your protein, right? So that's how you're going to be moving from a DNA to RNA. And now we are prepped up to create a protein. So the mRNA that we that was created it was made in the nucleus because that's where most of your DNA is, right? But the mRNA then now moves out of the nucleus and into the cytoplasm. It's like, you know, you have the cell, you have the compact part, the part that is the nucleus, and then you have the cytoplasm where many other things, many other functions of the cells also happen. And that's where the mRNA goes in. So it is over here that the protein factories that we call as the ribosomes. So think about it, that these are factories that have um, a lot of the other uh, nucleotides and the amino acids, and you're going to use that to be able to make the proteins. But how do we know which protein to make, right? So you have a, um, a factory that is ready to make protein for you, but you need to know what protein you want to make, right? So what we do over here is that the ribosome then will bind into the mRNA that just came from the nucleus into the cytoplasm, and it will make a protein. Now you know that proteins are made up of the base 21 amino acids that are found. And it basically uses the template that the mRNA uh, got with us, right? So we started with the double-stranded DNA, we made the mRNA, the messenger RNA moved from the nucleus out into the cytoplasm. And once it came into the cytoplasm, it binds to the ribosome, uses that template. And now what does it do? Uh, so you had, let's say, A, C, U, G, and so on. Each of these three letters, also known as a codon, would actually then code for an amino acid, which the ribosome knows how to make, right? So you've got this message. Message says, this is the recipe you need to create, right? A, U, G, G, C, whatever. So you're taking each of these, you're reading them not one at a time, you're reading them three at a time. And once you read them three at a time, you are basically coding for an amino acid. And then you start and... You read three, you read another three, you read another three, and so on, till you come to the end of it. When you come to the end of it, you have a chain of amino acids, and that's your protein, right? So that's basically what you're going to be using it. It creates this whole thing, and now it folds into a beautiful protein shape, and that is your protein. So that's, in a sense, how a protein is made. Now, there are many, many types of proteins, and we won't go into that as yet. So now that you know, you have the instruction manual, you have the whole instruction that was the genome, you have the DNA, you have the RNA, and then you have the protein. Do you think you can make a human? Think about it. Thank you very much.